Hey everyone, I'm your average guide Sahil Gogna. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we are going to discuss some of the questions that puzzles the research aspirants. And to guide us on this, we have with us Preeti. She was a research student at McGill University and right now she's pursuing her PhD from University of British Columbia. So without any delay, let's get started. First of all, Preeti, thanks a lot for joining the talk today. Thank you for inviting me. It's my pleasure. <laughs> it's my pleasure to have you on the talk. So Preeti, before we start asking you any questions, so it would be great if you can add something about your background to the audience. Sure. Uh, so I'm going to start with where I'm now. So I'm a PhD student currently at uh, UBC, University of British Columbia in Canada, and I'm in computer science program. Uh, I'm originally from India. I did my bachelor's from NIV Bhopal in electronics and communication. And then uh, I moved to McGill uh, for my master's and I stayed in Montreal, one of the amazing city to live in. And then I'm here now uh, doing my PhD in University of British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And uh, Preeti, uh, the US is also very famous among the research aspirants. So was there any particular reason that you chose Canada over the US? Yeah, it's a legit question. Uh, when I was applying for master's, I did apply to a, a couple of uh, United States based universities last week. Like I applied for most of the US universities because I'm like, I've already did one internship in Canada, so I don't want to come back to Canada. I want to explore the university. But then when I came to master's, uh, I just started wondering, there was so many aspects to it, right? You are going outside your own country. You have to start your own life in a new country. You have to be financially dependent upon yourself and like there's research aspects, there's cultural aspects and uh, Canada suited uh, really well in all these categories. You get like a lot of scholarship options uh, and you don't have to pay as much as money in tuition as you pay in United States, uh, States schools. So yeah. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. And Preeti, one question that comes to every student's mind is about the, what's, what's the basically difference between the research-based masters and the course-based masters. So particularly, I would like to know like how your day was different from a student who is pursuing the course-based masters. Sure, yeah. So uh, as I know from my friends who have done course-based masters, you have to take like a particular set of credits and you take those credits and you're done. Uh, you uh, you might have to do some project uh, based upon your program, but like mostly you do like courses, which is good. Uh, but in the research based masters, you start in a lab, you work on a research project, you work with the team from the beginning, and in the end you have to write a thesis. And uh, writing a thesis is something. <laughs> so yeah, like you have to work on research projects, which is pretty cool. You are a part of the lab, so you meet and like you chill with your lab mates. You uh, work as a team, you write papers, you do research, you mentor students who are uh, in your lab and it's it's a uh, experience by itself. But yeah, it's it's super fun. It is definitely a added work, uh, but if you are aspiring to become a professor and be in academia for a while and like do further research and research based. Okay, that's interesting. And Preeti, uh, if we talk about the final graduation thing, so like I know like when we are pursuing the course based master, we have to go for particular semesters, pass those semesters, go to next semester. So how this thing works in the research phase? So I know you in the final, you have to publish one research paper. So like, are there any particular small milestones that you need to achieve and after you are eligible for the final research paper or how the this whole thing works? Yeah, sure. So in the program that I was a part of, you have to take certain amounts of credits. So my first year was mostly like taking course but I also got started with my research in the first or second semester, and I was working on like a site, small project in my lab. And uh, the idea is like, you don't have to publish a paper necessarily, but it's like suggested that you publish a paper. If you're going into academia, you need to have those publications in hand, uh, but you are required to submit a written thesis. And thesis is like whatever research work you have done so far and it needs to be legit you need to like show your work you need to show which research area you focus on and like which problem particularly you solved so yeah okay. it was pretty interesting like if if you are hoping to be in academia it it is like definitely worth doing the research masters because you develop so many skills uh, uh, during the the course of the projects 
like especially the academic writing part doing the research defining a problem and then working towards it uh it's it's a whole experience and also collaborating with your partners along the way uh that's amazing and priti if we talk about the scholarship programs for the research uh, research students so what's the scope for that and what does it take to get a scholarship when you are uh, doing your research with master yeah uh, a lot of students ask me this uh, what is the scope of uh, getting scholarships and fortunately in canada we have a lot of programs running and uh, it is definitely hard uh, for international students to get a scholarship but if you try you can get fully funded uh my masters particularly was fully funded by scholarships and my research stipend so um there are there's a certain program called mydax that i was a part of and mydax gives you a scholarship if you come back to canada after doing an internship and there is also research based stipend so if you're working in a lab in a particular project uh your professor can arrange for a research stipend and you get paid for your research work and there is also other uh, things going on you can be a teaching assistant uh, you can teach uh, your fellow students in a in a course so there is a lot of opportunities and if if ever you are applying for masters definitely uh, check out the university website check out the programs and definitely apply uh, for a scholarship okay and priti if you travel back to time so whenever we are at the bachelor stage so we are pursuing our bachelor's degree so how we can make sure that we are actually made for the research profile and in particular like how like what what does it take to be a research student for in in the masters program yeah so i think it's more about um, like what are you passionate about what do you want to do in life i need to have those ideas okay i want to solve this particular problem and uh, this is the way i'm going to go with it so i'm just going to apply i'm going to make a robot uh, that helps in surgery or i'm just going to make a wearable device that helps to track your uh, physical health signals and things like that so if you have these ideas coming up you should definitely try to work on small projects by yourself uh, definitely during your bachelor's you should go for internship experiences uh, it really helps you to develop the perspective of research and how things are done um when i was a bachelor uh, in my bachelor's degree i actually went i actually came to canada for an uh, internship in york university mm-hmm. and uh, it was super beneficial because you learn the work culture you meet so many new people uh, you learn about their research so if you are thinking of being a researcher or being in academia for a while definitely start early start building up your profile do small projects do not start anything big but like start small and that's how you can like build up your profile slowly mm-hmm. and pretty while i was in bachelor's a lot of people around me they were targeting the big schools for the masters program and uh, they were mainly focusing just on gre and the cgpa so i would like to know like are these two factors enough to make it to top schools like mcgill or ubc uh, or does it take more to build your profile for such universities Sure. Uh, yeah. So, as a student, when you come from India, we we see GRE as a competitive exam, although it's not. Uh, GRE is just one part of the application. It is just mm-hmm. to satisfy that you can communicate and that you can write well in English. But there are other parts of the application which are really important. One of this is academia, like how much your grades are and are you doing good enough in your subjects? Do you know the basics? Then the other part is, do you have any prior research experiences? Uh, I know a lot of undergrad students from here, from McGill and UBC, and they work with professors in different uh, labs, and they gain research experience early in their career, and that really helps. Like if you're working with a professor, just like helping them out in their projects and like helping them out write a paper, helping them out conduct experiments, uh, it really helps to develop uh, your profile. And then you can say, okay, I know the basics of research. I know how how things are done. So that is one thing. The other thing is uh, you should also uh, be you should also take some leadership roles early in your career maybe just teaching in a workshop uh, being a workshop organizer like in indian uh, colleges you get a lot of these opportunities right you have clubs uh, and these things are substantial because you gain leadership experience you uh, gain experiences to work with the team so if you have all these experiences in your profile it really helps uh in while writing your application so it's just not gre and uh, your academic score and the other thing that i would like to mention is like even if your academic score is less like if your cgpa is less than 7 
and you're not the top student in university you can still get admission from top universities it's just not the end of uh, yeah anything like you just need to build your profile and just show what you're interested okay. in and priti we know like uh, to get the admission as a research student it takes more than you know uh, just getting admission in a university i mean there are a lot of other steps that are required to that is to choose a professor to choose a to 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 choose an area in which you want to do research so what's the mindset behind that and how can a student make sure they are heading in a right direction sure yeah that's uh, something that i struggle with a lot <clears throat> So when I was in bachelor's I was actually interested in medical robotics and I wanted to go in that field particular field but I was also exploring the other areas uh, which was mostly haptics and AI so while exploring uh, the other areas I came across the work of several professors mm-hmm. and uh, I would say it definitely helps to do your research prior and just like ask yourself a question what do you want to do with life and what exactly you would like to uh, how you see yourself in like coming 3 years mm-hmm. and uh, things like that so yeah just like uh researching profiles of professors uh checking their lab websites and like making a list okay this is what i'm interested in and organizing your content uh a lot of students like just drop me a message that i'm applying for my masters i don't know what to do can you tell me what subject i should first see my masters on this is not the way to go you sh- should decide some areas that you're interested in and then you should explore that by yourself that okay this is the this is the particular field that i really like and then go forward with it and pretty one more question about this like whenever we are applying for a particular university or applying to pursue your master under a professor we receive the interview calls so what's the thought process behind this like what are they expecting exactly in the interviews and what are the like right resources to prepare for them sure yeah uh, so interviews are a major part of applications especially if you're applying to canada professors might reach out to you if they like your application and they might ask you to schedule an interview uh one of the most important part in interview is to well be well prepared with the projects mm-hmm. you have done uh not superficially but like, like be well prepared to answer the questions in depth So I would say like reflect on the work you have done so far uh, what are its implications how does it scale to like on a larger uh, on a larger scale and the other applications and just think about it and do not like have a super superficial idea about the project and if you're talking to a professor do your research uh, just like uh, read their papers uh, tell them about okay how this particular research field can be involved and like what are the other projects that you can add and what can you contribute to the group so definitely like before interview uh, do your research be well prepared do not do superficial work just like reflect and think deeply what you have done so far and what would you like to do to take out some time to prepare those points okay And Preeti, uh, what was your overall experience at McGill University and right now while you are pursuing your PhD? So, what's your experience with the University of British Columbia? Mm-hmm. Sure, uh, McGill has been super nice. Uh, when I first moved from uh, from India to Montreal, there was definitely like a big uh, cultural change and a cultural shock. The classes were different. Uh, the format was different. But the funny thing that I observe is like people eating snacks in the class. I'm like, okay, we can do that. <laughs> so yeah, there was a, a lot of different things that was happening. Also, uh, people really work hard here, and I I found it really challenging to when I was taking grad school courses, and I took a lot of computer science courses, and my background is from electronics and communication engineering. So I did I did really struggle hard in first one or two of my courses but I I really tried hard uh to try my best and just to not give up and like try harder to just like get the concepts in my head. Uh so McGill is super great like the courses that we took it was nice. Uh I like working with my lab mates they were super nice and helpful. Uh one thing I would say that I did uh really right is like asking questions whenever I was stuck. So I was not afraid uh, that like people are gonna just uh, think I'm good. I'm stupid and I don't know a thing. If I have a question and if I don't know the answer to, I just ask the right person, and that is really important because if you don't ask these questions yeah. in the beginning, it's gonna hit you back. <laughs> yeah. So 
definitely like collaborate with your lab mates ask questions uh, from the expert and definitely you will learn a lot so that is something i learned and even while writing my thesis and writing those papers i was like okay how to do the statistical modeling i have no idea how, how this code is not running i have no idea so I, i did try hard by myself to make it work but if i was stuck uh, for a really long time i did ask questions uh, from my senior members in the lab <laughs> so that was that and then ubc is going good so far <laughs> yeah uh as you all know it's pandemic so like uh, i'm working from home uh, no access to the lab that is a bit restraining because i work with hardware and like uh, electronics so it's hard to not be in the lab but i'm like setting up a small semi lab in my room itself and i'm trying to work from home so it's it's going good so far we have a nice community here as well in ubc yeah so breathe you have uh, i think pretty much shared everything so before we come to an end to our talk so any final advice to all, uh, all the research aspirants that who are currently watching our video mm, sure uh one thing that i tell everyone who is new in research and academia is building connections uh and networking so networking is like a overly used word like do networking and people don't really know what networking is so it is just like meeting people that uh that are similar that are in your research field and even like meeting people outside your research field uh just to open up your perspectives towards different areas it really helps uh especially now in pandemic when every event is going virtual i would recommend you should definitely attend uh virtual conferences and virtual workshops and events that is happening uh it helps us it helps you to open up your mind a little bit and it'll give you like several ideas you can't think of uh, new ideas when you're sitting in your room and like just surrounded by the same group of people you have been with forever So if you go out meet new people you get those new perspective and uh, if you're a new researcher that really helps because you know okay what's happening in the field of HCI okay what's cool in the field of robotics i know because i have met these people who are working and i follow these people's work so yeah definitely uh, go for networking uh, follow people's work read their work uh, just go out there everything is in there uh, yeah. is there in the internet right <laughs> Yeah. Our generation is so lucky. We can just log in. We can search. This was my today's video. I hope you have liked it. Make sure to subscribe the channel for more such amazing videos. See you in the next video. Till then, stay safe.